The opening line to A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens is iconic. Marley was dead to begin with. Less fondly remembered are the lines that follow. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The important thing was that I had an onion on my belt, which was a style at the time. Not to poop on the classics, but this is, to use a technical term, bad. As Strunk and White say in The Elements of Style, vigorous writing is concise. A sentence should contain no unnecessary words, a paragraph no unnecessary sentences, for the same reason that a drawing should have no unnecessary lines and a machine no unnecessary parts. This doesn't mean you have to chop down great sentences in their prime or exterminate descriptors so that every character and backdrop is reduced to a shadow in the reader's mind. As they say themselves, this requires not that the writer make all his sentences short, or that he avoid all detail and treat his subjects only in outline, but that every word tell. It just means that if the words you're using don't tell the story you're trying to write, then they have to go. To take the example of A Christmas Carol, let's make that opening line sharper and more effective. <clears throat> the Marleys were dead to begin with. Oh, well, pardon me? That's how the story begins, Rizzo. The Marleys were dead to begin with. Oh. As dead as a doornail. It's a good beginning. It's creepy and kind of woohoo, spooky. Oh, thank you, Rizzo. You're welcome, Mr. Dickens. Luckily for us, unlike the real Charles Dickens, the great Gonzo wasn't paid by the word. Moving on from Dickens, what would you say if you bought a novel only to find that over a third of the pages don't tell the story and instead contain political essays which, whilst potentially fitting with the themes of the plot, stopped that same plot dead and shoved the characters aside in favour of a soapbox? Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Angry, ham-faced conservatives might tell you that's what all media is nowadays. Leftism in every still of film, every moment of gameplay, every ink-filled page. But in actual fact, I'm talking about Les Miserables by Hippic de Hugo. And I mean, sure, his essays may be on point, you may find yourself agreeing with them. But 955 pages out of 2,783? Imagine if 58 minutes of the 2012 film, rather than being a straight adaptation of the musical, was just Hugh Jackman with a megaphone telling you that capitalism and empire are bad. That might be fun, actually. But it wouldn't be a very good story. It would also undermine the storytelling of the film, break the immersion, and do a disservice to the characters. The themes of Les Miserables are strong enough that you don't need an essay in the middle of the work to work out that Victor Hugo didn't think poverty was natural justice to the lazy and the criminal. Infusing your story with political themes is fine, some of the best stories set in fictional worlds reflect injustices in our own, and are so strong and well-crafted precisely because they do so. But if you have to write an essay to get that parallel and that theme across, well, maybe you should just write essays instead of fiction? Finally, if you can remove a character from the plot entirely, and it has no bearing on the story, then they were probably unnecessary to begin with. I'll call this... The Tom Bombadil effect. Why are you pulling me? I'm Ray. I've deliberately picked on three really big authors from the past and chosen their most egregious, exaggerated sins for this video. I don't think any aspiring authors out there are writing up digressions on similes, stopping the narrative to insert an essay, or having extraneous characters hijack whole chapters. But if you are, stop. The serious point is this. Just tell the story. If it's a good story, and or you do it well, because yes, it's possible to tell a mediocre story excellently, then that's all you need. Anything that gets in the way of that, whether it's a word, a paragraph, a chapter, or a whole character, then cut them. If you enjoyed this video, then click the like button. Subscribe to the channel for more content about books and writing, including me reading my own book as a podcast. See you next time.